Don't mess with Murphy. That was the case when a decoy from perverted justice started getting messages from a man who we learned was an assistant sure. district attorney from a nearby county. He was the Kaufman County, Texas, district attorney for more than two decades. 56-year-old Lewis William Conrad Jr., screen name in excess 00, chatted graphically about sex with a perverted justice volunteer pretending to be a 13-year-old boy. Those pictures that she sent, those are pretty hot. Oh, did you like them? Yeah, I sure did. The prosecutor pretends to be a 19-year-old college student sending these pictures of a young man who looks like a model. You're hot and in college. You can get all the guys you want. Why me? To me, you're hot. Why? I like younger. Really? Like for boyfriend or just sex? Both. Is that your Yes. It looks huge. Please don't trade it, Luke, okay? No, I swear. In his chat with the perverted justice decoy, he talked about wanting to watch the boy masturbate and holding each other and feeling all over. He sent pornographic pictures. And what do you want to do? Um, whatever you'd like to do. You tell me. Um. But for some reason, Conrad abruptly stopped chatting. As we mentioned earlier, because the prosecutor doesn't live in Murphy, Chief Myrick has turned over the job of arresting him to local police in Conrad's hometown of Taro. Then we hear a faint crack. The officers force their way in. As they made entry, they confronted the suspect. I believe he's in the hallway, and he told them he wasn't going to hurt them, and then shot himself in the head. He is then airlifted to Parkland Memorial Hospital in Dallas, where he later died. How did you feel when you found out that he died? I don't feel responsible for it. I sleep well at night. Don't mess with Murphy. Lewis Conrad, former Kaufman County District Attorney, is the man often credited with ending TCAP as a show and setting 24 suspected predators free due to his suicide on Bonfire Night 2006. His chat log is publicly available, filed under other resolutions on the Perverted Justice website, but what a lot of people don't know is that he wasn't the first predator to die because of TCAP. Charles Harding and James Wiles both stopped taking medication that directly led to their deaths whilst waiting for trial after being arrested during a TCAP sting operation. This all leads to one question which we have to ask. What was so different about Lewis Conrad's death that meant that it garnered all of this controversy? The best way to investigate this would be to dive into his personal history and see if that had any effect on the outrage. He was inextricably linked to Dateline NBC's To Catch a Predator. Lewis William Conrad Jr. was born on the 30th of January 1950 in Terrell, Texas, the same town where he would meet his demise. A small town in Kaufman County, Conrad would dedicate almost his entire working life for the county, serving as its district attorney for 20 years after graduating from the Texas Tech University of Law, 400 miles away. According to Esquire, this was a man that was known to his peers as a man likely to succeed. So much so that he was voted most likely to succeed by the high school class that he was president of. The only memory some of his peers have of him, where he wasn't a so proper, so predictable man, was when he had to be wheeled home in a wheelbarrow from a party where Jamie Foxx, yes, that Jamie Foxx, was the entertainment. After leaving his position as Kaufman County District Attorney to make a failed run to become the 86th State District Judge, he became the Chief Felony Assistant District Attorney for Rockwell County, a county directly bordering the north of Kaufman County, just 30 minutes away by car. It would be fair to assume that he had a close relationship with the police, given that he was an attorney, but also because during his arrest, they mentioned that the policeman who knocked on his door was a sergeant who has known Conrad for 20 years. Given this background, now would be a great time to delve into the actual investigation and see if it had any effect on the incident or not. The town's police chief announced he was declaring war on sexual predators. He said this will put the city of Murphy on the map. Contrary to a lot of people's thoughts, the Murphy, Texas TCAP investigation was the show's ninth. After this, there would be three more investigations, namely Flagler Beach, Florida, Ocean County, New Jersey, and Bowling Green, Kentucky. 25 men in total were caught in the sting, with 5 of them being dead at this current moment in time. Those being Stanley Kendall, Twink Toilet, 
Timothy Knowles, Timothy Gilliam, and of course, the man we are currently discussing, Lewis Conrad. Before the investigation even started, there was significant pushback from authority figures in Texas. They did not want Dateline there. It seems, mostly, because they wanted full control over the investigations and not having Dateline commanding the police, which, according to certain people, is what ended up happening. The DA's office was so against this operation that they sent a letter to Chief Myrick, who we will discuss very soon, saying, we are in the law enforcement business, not show business. Dateline also received significant pushback from the local community in Murphy, to the point of locals protesting outside of the sting house because they thought the operation would draw more predators to Murphy. Which is really down to personal opinion. I couldn't find arrest numbers to prove anything, but this seems like a highly unlikely outcome. If people know about a sting operation in a certain place, surely they would be more likely to stay as far away from that place that they know has law enforcement that is equipped to deal with their certain crime. Although in all fairness, I can see how letting 24 sexual predators walk free would lead to some people feeling more empowered and think that they are more likely to get away with it, but that's just my opinion. Detective Patterson, an off-duty detective TCAP had hired as protection, was noted for spotting several mistakes made in the arrest, such as potential crossfire situations and the overly intense takedowns for the situation. Apart from all this, the investigation was pretty normal, but to me, the one thing that makes the investigation stand out above all, apart from the Lewis Conrad situation, is Chief Billy Myrick. Murphy Police Chief Billy Myrick explains. Billy R. Myrick is the son of the apparently famous guitarist and policeman Billy Myrick. At the time of the sting, he had been chief in Murphy for one and a half years and had never previously been a chief anywhere else. According to the Esquire article, Tonight on Dateline, This Man Will Die, Myrick was described as a good officer, but not a great leader, with most people that were interviewed in his background check coming to the consensus that he should be nowhere near such a position of power. These claims would be seemingly vindicated years after the TCAP operation, as in 2014, this time as chief in Eastland, Texas, Myrick and his department fumbled an investigation into Clayton Lee Ford, who would then go on and commit further crimes which led him to plead guilty to aggravated sexual assault of a child, attempted capital murder, and two counts of indecency with a child by contact. This man seems incapable of arresting nonces without making sure they walk free. By the way, if you're wondering, the reason that Myrick was in charge in Eastland and not Murphy is because he was fired by the new city manager in 2008 after locals kept demanding that he was sacked for the TCAP sting. If you still think that sacking the man is a bit harsh, there is one more concerning story from this sting that really makes you question why this man was ever allowed near a position of police power. Shortly before the sting, Dateline, Perverted Justice and the Murphy PD ran a proof of concept sting where, Esquire alleges, that Myrick seized the SUV the Predator drove to the house and from then on used the vehicle as his own personal automobile. The man was woefully inept wherever he went, which is made even clearer by the actual day of the incident. There's one more day left in our undercover operation, and perverted justice decoys are still in chat rooms. Right, time to talk about the fucking shit show. The day started with Chief Myrick demanding that Detective Walter Weiss, known as Gator, immediately get both a search warrant and an arrest warrant for Lewis Conrad. Dateline are alleged to have wanted this warrant immediately because they had tickets to fly out in the afternoon. Dateline NBC and Perverted Justice would camp outside of the house from the early morning, planning to interview him if he left the house to go to church or to the shops or anything like that. However, Dateline and Perverted Justice were not exactly discreet in their stakeout, allegedly bringing both a catering truck and a DJ. There was absolutely no need for a bloody disc jockey and possibly helped to tip off Lewis Conrad that he was probably wanted by to catch a predator. This theory would be contested by those involved with this show, saying in the narration that since Conrad never came to the house, there is nothing to suggest that a new dateline was involved. After a while, Myrick decided to get the Terrell police involved as it was taking place in their area rather than Murphy. They would send a police sergeant, who had been a friend of Conrad for over two decades, to knock on the door and try to coax Lewis out peacefully. He was obviously unsuccessful. 
The police could see that somebody was in the house because the TV and laptop were on. So someone camped out near a window, ostensibly to go in if Conrad motioned to the computer out of fear of the destruction of evidence. The police were then notified by, let's just say, non-police members of the investigation that they had Lewis Conrad's number, something that they had not tried earlier. They called it, but received no response and would not try again. After getting no response for a while, they got word that the search warrant had been signed, in addition to the arrest warrant that was signed earlier. And around this time, the decision was made to call a tactical team to force an entry and get Conrad out. Around 45 minutes after they were called, the tactical team arrived on the scene and determined that a sliding glass door would be the best place for entry into the house. A faint crack could be heard from outside the house, and no one else would hear anything until Lieutenant Barber came out to Chris Hansen to tell him that Conrad had killed himself. And Lieutenant Adina Barber of the Murphy Police Department comes out and tells us what happened. As they made entry, they confronted the suspect. I believe he's in the hallway, and he told them he wasn't going to hurt them, and then shot himself in the head. And he had a pistol in his hand. Small caliber. An ambulance would be called as the police tried to stem the bleeding, but as Conrad was being carted past Chris Hansen, it became very clear that he would most likely not make it. He was airlifted away, but was later pronounced dead at the Parkland Memorial Hospital in Dallas. Elsewhere, police pulled over and arrested part of NBC security, an off-duty police officer, Detective Patterson. This was a case of mistaken identity, as they thought he was a perp, and they were apologetic about the mistake. Also, Edward Hollingsworth V, aka Twink Toilet was arrested on the Stinkhouse front yard by police after Decoy Dan logged him out of the inside of the house. Chris Hansen would determine what version of events transpired and tell the news crew, well I mean, there's gonna be some controversy. Don't mess with Murphy! Decoy Dan allegedly felt terrible and guilty after the death of Lewis Conrad, and could go on to explain the reason for him not mentioning TCAP in any of his work in the modern day. Apparently he never really liked TCAP, it just provided him with five grand every time he did it. Gator, the officer who wrote the warrant, would leave law enforcement entirely and never return due to his frustration about how things were handled, being forced to write the warrant after being denied sleep for 26 hours and being told, you work for Dateline now. He would appear on the 2020 investigation into this incident. Perverted Justice founder Xavier von Erk would go on to say that his only regret would be that Conrad died before he was able to face justice, a sentiment echoed by the website to this day. He would justify the actions taken that day by saying that Conrad abruptly stopped chatting and was destroying evidence, evidenced by him deleting his MySpace page. However, von Erk would also email Esquire and say that the MySpace page was still up and then say that that MySpace page was discovered after the operation. According to the Columbia Journalism Review, Chris Hansen's first reaction was to cover the story for NBC, which he did, appearing on the Today Show to fill the public in on exactly what happened. Hansen would deny any responsibility in Conrad's death, and insists to multiple outlets that he sleeps well at night. However, he has expressed that he never wants to see this, though the following claim is intensely disputed. Chris maintains that Conrad had pornographic images of children on his computer, for which he could have faced up to a hundred years in prison for. The DA's office declined to prosecute any of the predators caught. Whilst it seems to some that they were angry that one of their own was caught in the sting, the DA's office offers some rather ironclad reasoning for the decision. One reason was that it was almost impossible to prove for 16 of the men arrested that either they or the decoy were actually in the jurisdiction of the DA's office when the crime was actually committed, which is a requirement under Texas law. Another reason was that, allegedly, all of the arrests made were technically illegal, as almost all of the predators had been arrested without any prior investigation into the crimes that these predators may or may not have committed. Billy Myrick essentially tried to brush off the events of the day, focusing on the predators that he had caught that were still alive. After being bombarded with pleas for him to resign, he stayed in the post until he was fired in 2008. During this time, he was routinely asked whether he had taken orders from Dateline and perverted justice, thus allowing them to act as the de facto leaders of the operation, when it was purported to many officials that the police would be firmly in charge. Myrick vehemently denied these allegations, but footage from the scenes seemed to paint a much different story, 
with Dateline being described as surveillance and Hansen and Frank providing information to the police that they were not in possession of. ABC, about a year on from the incident, would run a 20 over 20 about this specific incident which ruthlessly ripped into the show, the police involved, and attempted to portray Lewis Conrad as a sympathetic figure. Esquire would delve into the day as much as possible and, like ABC, would try as hard as possible to make Lewis Conrad seem like a victim rather than a criminal. They would concede that it was immoral for Lewis Conrad to chat like this, but also said words to the effect of, he did not go to the sting house and therefore the police actions were not justified. Conrad's sister, Patricia, as well as attempting to sue NBC for $100 million, said, I will never consider my brother's death a suicide. It was an act precipitated by the rush to grab headlines where there was no evidence that there was any emergency other than to line the pockets of an out of control group and a TV show press for ratings and a deadline. When these people came after him for a news show, it ended his life. We got another predator off the streets. There is an abundance of reasons that TCAP was cancelled. Rising costs, falling predator numbers, criticism of paying perverted justice, but the suicide of Lewis Conrad was ultimately the biggest reason. The show would ultimately run for just one more year, having three investigations shown in five segments. It is very debatable whether or not the show would have continued had Lewis Conrad been taken alive, but in my opinion, I still think the show would have been cancelled, but a fair bit later. Listening to Hansen speak, it is clear that he wanted to do more, but not forever, and NBC realised that the show was timeless, so there was definitely a ticking clock on the show. Conrad just set the cancellation forward by a large amount of time. It's not like the show would have been free from controversy either way, but there is absolutely no debate that Lewis Conrad helped to end TCAP. What was today's lesson supposed to be? Overall, I believe that the reason there was such a fuss about this one person's death was due to a combination of factors. His deep ties to a place that was hostile from the beginning meant that the investigation into him was always going to be difficult. TCAP had started coming under fire for the ethical reasons, and an ever-increasing amount of scrutiny was being placed on Dateline and perverted justice. The absolute shit show of a police process that was fast-tracked and badly done meant that there was more fuel to add to the fire that would be lit if anything went wrong, and it went wrong. The ever-present debate about whether Dateline was reporting the news or manufacturing it. All of these factors meant that Lewis Conrad's death was a major issue for many people. He was almost certainly guilty of the crimes that he was accused of, but never stood trial, so the full extent of the evidence will almost certainly never be widely known. Lewis Conrad killed himself on Bonfire Night 2006, but in doing so, he also killed the show that pushed him over the edge. Thank you all for watching, stay safe, and remember that no situation is ever black and white.